Hi weaving friends, there's a little story that goes along with this video. I was actually searching through my archives the other day for a different video and I stumbled across this one with the kitty cats and I remembered that I intended to actually upload it to YouTube but for whatever reason, unbeknownst to me, I never did and that was about three years ago. The video is absolutely fine, it's just that this was recorded before I upgraded my audio system and so if you're having trouble hearing what I'm saying, I recommend that you turn on the closed captions. If you would like a free printable PDF to go along with this video, it has all of the instructions written out for you and it's also got a few more details about the yarns that I used. That is available on my Teachable School and I'm providing the link for that underneath this video. Registration there is absolutely free and you can watch the class and get the printable PDF there as well. Enjoy! Hello there weaving friends. I've got for you today some cute little kitties. I actually wasn't going to do this video but I had been playing around a little bit and I showed a photo on Facebook and someone said oh what cute kitties so I thought well I think it's worth doing these ones then. As usual we'll start with a border however you want to do your border. What I'm using for this one is um, some alpaca which goes really well for something like a cat because Alpaca is sort of fluffy and hairy like a cat. So you can choose whatever colour you like. I'm using an 8-ply wool warp with an 8-ply alpaca for the weft, for the pattern weft that is, and for the background weft I'm using the same as the warp. If you haven't reviewed my other video, my first video I did on Branu inspired weaving, that would be the hearts one. So go and review that one before you attempt this one. Alright, so our first row with our heddle in neutral will be three up, one down, one up, one down, seven up, one down, one up, one down, and then we repeat from seven up. So seven up, one down, one up, one down, seven again, one down, one up, one down, seven, one down, one up, one down, right across to the end of the row. And all of these notes will be in the comments section. If you can't see it, please click on see more. Now I'm going to bring my pattern weft in from the right. And you can use either a little stick shuttle like this if you've got one. Or a yarn butterfly is fine as well. Okay, take a pick up stick out. And I am in the up shed for my plain weave background. Make sure that my two threads here go around each other. So that one's going to sit there. This one's going to come up so that they catch on the edge there. Okay, back into neutral for pickup. Next row is exactly the same as the first row. Three up, one down, one up. One down and then seven up. Let's see, two, four, six, seven up. One down, one up, one down. And you can sort of see where the, the pattern lies after that if you want to do it that way. So that you don't have to do the counting. But if you find that difficult, just carry on counting. Okay, pick 
up stick on edge and we take our pattern weft through I'm doing singles for this one often for this technique I do um, double rows of the pattern weft but for this one I think it works a bit better if they're just singles because they're just tiny little kitties so now I'm in the down shed for my background pattern weft and my two threads are crossing over at the edges Now that brings us to row three of pickup, which is three up, three down, and then seven up, and three down, and then we repeat from seven up. Three down, seven up, three down. So you can see here which group of three I'm putting down each time. The middle group of three. Okay. Shed this time. It's going to catch. Okay, so we've got part of our body and the legs. So the next row is the same as what we just did for row three. So we can use our stick and start with, what did we do, three up and then three down and then we went seven up, three down, didn't we? We were grouping those three central threads together. on edge and we can now weave that through I'm going to catch that on the edge there because it doesn't have anything to catch on to okay and then I go to the down shed for my background thread catching on the brown thread there which is what I want and now back into neutral for the next row of pickup now I can see I've made a little mistake here I've, and here I've overshot by one thread or something I've somehow got out of alignment there um, if I wasn't weaving for the video I'd go back and fix that but I'm not going to go back and fix that these ones are all fine so I'll just keep going but normally I would go back and fix that Okay, so we're up, we've got done one, two, three, four pattern rows, and so we're on to our fifth. There are only seven all together, so this is really quite an easy pattern to do. And this time we're doing two up, one down, then three up, then two down, then four up. A bit more varied this time. Um, Back to one down, then three up, 
two down, four up. One down, three up. Two down, four up. One down again, three up. Two down, four up. One down, three up. Two down, four up. One down, three up. Two down, four up. One down, three up. Two down, that takes me to the edge. Okay, getting tangled. Oh no, oh there we go. All right, so I am gonna catch this edge again. Stick out. And I'm in the up shed, so I will do my background thread in the up shed. Back into neutral for the next row of pickup, which is one down. Oh, sorry, one up. One down, four up, two down, three up. Then back to one down, four up, two down, three up. One down, four up, two down, three up. One down, four up, two down, Three up, one down, four up, two down, three up, one down, four up, two down, three up, one down, four up, and then that takes me to the edge. You can weave as many repeats of this as you need to get across the, wall, the width of your warp. So it doesn't matter if your warp is half this or whether you have your full width warped. You can adjust the pattern so that you can tailor it to whatever width you want. Now down shed. And that brings us to our last row. We're starting to look like cats now, but they don't really look like cats until you put the ears on and we're going to embroider those. Okay, next row of pickup is row seven and we start with one down, nine up and we repeat that. So three, six, nine, and then one down again. And then the same, nine, and then one down. So essentially what we're doing is putting the tip on the end of the cat's tail. go okay uh, so I'm in the up shed so at this stage it looks a little bit like a monkey or something like that but once we put those cat shaped ears on then you can see it's a cat 
So I'm just going to weave a few more rows of plain weave. And then you just need some embroidery floss that roughly matches the colour of the wool that you used or um, the yarn that you used. And a tapestry needle. So starting with a tapestry needle and I'm using four strands of floss. I'm going to put a good knot in the end. and make it a fairly fat knot so it doesn't just pull through. Okay. And I'm going to start at the top of the head, right near the edge. About there. And I'm going to make two peaks. So one peak on this side and then the other peak, but it basically goes across the top of the head. So one peak could go to about there. You can make the ears bigger or smaller depending on your preference. So then I'll come up here in the middle and I'll go back through that hole that I made there. Okay, so that's peak number one. And then I will come up on the other side of the head, like I did for this side. And roughly the same height as the other peak. Come up through the middle of the back. Oh, not doing so well. I'm actually using my left hand <coughs> because my right hand will get in the way. So, back down through that hole, and there you have your kitty ears. And if you want to, if there's too much of the background showing, you can fill them in with extra threads if you want to, up to you. So that they are a little bit darker in colour. And then we can just work our way along. If you're concerned about the um, thread pulling behind the work at all and distorting the work once it's off the loom, then you can knot that piece off behind and restart on the new piece. Um, on the next cat and there won't be any distortion 